Okay, today we're going to be learning how to calculate the average as well as the spread of your data using Excel. And by this, I mean the longhand way. So of course, we are talking about sample means in this case. Thinking back to what we know about the structure of data, rarely can we actually get all of the potential values for our entire population of interest. Therefore, today we're going to be talking specifically about sample means. And for the purposes of what we're going to be doing, sample mean is indeed an estimate of the population mean. This is just an accepted thing within statistics. So to calculate the sample mean, it's pretty straightforward. Essentially what we're doing is we are taking the sum of all observations in your data set and dividing that sum by the total number of observations. So x hat or y hat sometimes designates our sample mean. N is the number of observations in your sample data set. And then the summation is the sum of all observations in your data. So why do we care about the mean of our sample? Well, it tells us quite a bit about the global distribution of our frequency data. So we have a frequency distribution of our observations and we want to know where that peak is. Our sample mean tells us that. And overall, this is the average set of all of our measurements, which can be important for describing our data as well as for applying statistics. Standard deviation, on the other hand, is a measure of the spread of our data, and it basically tells us how far from the mean our observations tend to be. And you can see in these examples here what a high standard deviation versus a low standard deviation looks like. And you can see in the high standard deviation, most of the spread of our data is away from that mean. So our standard deviation is actually calculated from another measurement, which is called variance, which is designated by S squared. But today we're going to be focusing on standard deviation, and in general, folks typically choose standard deviation over variance because it's in the same units as our original observation. So here in sample variance, you'll see S squared gives us the squared deviation of our observations, which is in a different unit than our original observations, which is less intuitive. So how do we do this? First and foremost, we have to compute the deviations which is essentially taking our observation and subtracting the mean from it for every single measurement in our sample. The next step, we square each of these deviations. And essentially all this does is gets rid of any negative numbers because sometimes our individual observations are going to be smaller than our mean. So in the previous step, we might get a negative number. This allows us to get rid of it. Then we need to add up all of these square deviations. This is called a sum of squares. Last but certainly not least, we are going to divide our sum of squares by the number of observations minus one. So our sample size minus one, this just gives us a more precise measurement of deviation. Last but not least, to get rid of that squared, we take the square root of the resultant number. So let's hop over to Excel and give this a try. So I have some data here, actually about a family um, that I know. These are the heights and inches of five siblings. So folks that are closely related to one another, but they vary in height by pretty much about a foot. So let's go here to our first step. We need to calculate the deviations. And to do that, we of course need to first calculate the sample mean. I'm trying to get my computer screen so that I can look at everything at once. So we have our five different observations here. So in Excel, we hit equals and then we can select each of these numbers and add them together. And then we're going to get the total. And then because we have five observations, we're going to divide that total by five to get our arithmetic mean. So that's our mean. We're going to make it bold just so it stands out to us. So what's the next step? Next, we need to calculate the deviations. 
you can tell this gets a little bit tedious when you have larger data sets. So in the next tutorial, we're going to show you how to do this much easier in both Excel and R. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take each of our observations and subtract from it the mean. I'm just going to go down the line here. So now we have all of our deviations calculated. Again, the difference between each measurement and the sample mean. Our next step is to square each deviation. So again, I'm going to write in another column name just to keep everything nice and organized. And to do this in Excel, you can use the equal sign, select your value, do the caret, and then two. So essentially, we're raising each of these values to the second power or squaring it. You can also drag that corner flag in Excel down, and essentially that's going to copy over the formula that you were using. Just a nice little tip to keep in the back of your mind if you get bored of typing in formulas. So next we're going to add up all of these squared deviations. So again, using the equal sign, we're just going to go through and add up each of these squared deviation values. So we have 151.2, and again, this is just showing that you can also type it out longhand if you'd like. And we're going to get the same answer, assuming that my typing is accurate. There you go. Either way is fine. But now we have this sum of all of our squared deviations, so our sum of squares. Then we need to divide that sum of squares by the number of observations minus 1. So remember back, we have five original observations in our data set. So we're going to be dividing this sum of squares by four. All right. And then last but certainly not least, we need to take the square root of this value. And to do that in Excel, you write in equals SQRT, open parentheses, and then select your value. So for this particular data set, our standard deviation is approximately 6.15. So what do you think about the standard deviation? Considering that the average height is about 68.6 inches, and the standard deviation is 6.15. Consider what that means. Is this a broad distribution or a skinny one?